and we have Robert Downey Jr. on Doctor Doom. Now, outside of Hugh Jackman making the announcement that he was finally going to come back as Wolverine in Deadpool and Wolverine, which was probably some of the biggest news we ever had. Second to that was probably the announcement of Robert Downey Jr. coming back to the MCU, but this time as Dr. Doom. This was definitely something that I think was also met with mixed reactions. I already told y'all I didn't really like the idea of him coming back, but I understood why he had to come back because that's money in the bank. For the general audience, they just know Robert Downey Jr., Avengers, count me in. They don't care about all the details. I cared more so of the story continuity. I cared about the fact that we were just casually bypassing Kang and we were not getting at least Kang to be able to show why he's actually a problem. That's the problem I have. We have we've heard it. We've heard he's killed a bunch of uh, uh, galaxies and timelines. We've heard that he's dominated the Avengers multiple times, but we've never seen it. And that is something that I'm I'm I don't agree with Marvel creatively. Now, I will say that I think that it would be smart to at least show Doom destroying or defeating Kang. Um, I saw rumors that they might do that in the post credit scene. I think that that's kind of lazy if that's all you're going to show us. Um, I still think it would be kind of cool if you show us Kang, who dominated the Avengers, defeated them, and then show us Doom defeating him. But that's another story. But we do have Robert Downey uh, finally speaking up about uh, the role and probably clarifying something that a lot of people have been wondering about this role because a lot of folks are like, yo, wait a minute. Is this Tony Stark as a variant? Is it is he actually Victor Von Doom? Like, what, like what's happening here? Well, he has some conversations with the big boss man, Feige, and even higher than that. So let's see what he has to say in this interview here. It says here um, uh, when uh, Feige suggested uh, to Downey that he could return, um, Downey said, Feige said that it keeps it just keeps occurring to me if you were to come back. And Downey's wife was like, wait, wait, come back as what? So Feige kept he Feige went up to Robert Downey and was like, yo, it just keeps occurring to me if you were to come back. Now, let's put a pause on this real fast. Because Feige was the one for a long time that was like, nah, Hugh Jackman should not come back because the way Logan ended, it was perfect. Feige was the one who was like, nah, we can't go back. We're not going to go back to Robert Downey because what he did at the end of Endgame, that was it. Feige was the one that said that. Feige was also the one that was like, nah, Chadwick Boseman, his performance was so great. It, we, we, we're we not going to recast the T'Challa. That's what he said at first. After some pressure from the campaign and multiple interviews, then he was like, uh, it was too soon. But the point is, Feige has been the one consistently saying, we can't do it. We can't go back. And I have been telling y'all for the past couple years, Marvel can do whatever they want. It's fiction. And it's movies. If you wanted to bring back Robert Downey as Thor, you could find a stupid way, but you could find a way to do it if you really wanted to. They can do whatever they want. So I find it rich that this guy who has been constantly against going back into the well has already gone back in the well twice, which even which leads me even more so to believe that he better recast the child. And no, I'm not talking about the junior, the spiritual recast. I'm like, no, bring, if you can bring back a variant of Stark or whatever you're trying to do, you can do another T'Challa. Okay. Don't nobody have time to sit here and wait for this eight year old kid to grow up, to finally be in these movies. Don't do that. Now he does go on in this interview and says, <clears throat> this is Feige telling him now, how can we not go backwards? How can we not disappoint expectations? How can we continue to beat expectations? This is what Downey recalled. He also added, and he brought up Victor Von Doom. I looked into this character. Later on, he goes, let's get Victor Von Doom 
right. So I think that that kind of confirms that, yes, the actor Robert Downey Jr. is going to be coming in as a variant, but he will be playing the character Victor Von Doom. So if and when this happens, and obviously it will happen in Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars, I really hope that this shuts a lot of people up. And I'm talking about the people that don't really understand what I've been saying from the longest, which is we are sophisticated enough as an audience to mentally separate Robert Downey was the 616 Tony Stark, but now he's Victor Von Doom. You all will shut up and pay attention and turn your brains off and enjoy the movie. Not one person is going to come in here unless they've just literally been living under a rock. They're not going to sit here and be like, this can't be. He's Tony Stark and only Tony Stark. Everybody, the second you pay for your ticket, the second you put your butt in that seat, the second that Marvel logo goes on, everyone will believe Robert Downey is this version of Victor Von Doom. And I'm going to tell you exactly how they'll do it. They're probably going to give you a post credit scene in Fantastic Four to warm you up. They're probably going to show it to you in Avengers Doomsday, where this thing will be readily apparent. And by that time, after all these advertisings and, and trailers and posters, you will believe Robert Downey, the actor, can be a different character. And it's the same level of thinking that it takes for you to believe that that you would need to see another actor step in and play the role of T'Challa. Yes, I'm bringing that back to T'Challa because it aggravates me that people have this double standard and try to act like, well, it's a different situation. It's not the same thing. You know what is the same? The way your brain works. That's the same. The same way your brain suspends, you know, a, a belief because we're watching fiction. That's what will happen here. The same way you will watch a, this actor play a different character, you'll be okay if another actor steps in and plays T'Challa. Anyway, back to what he said. What's interesting here is the fact that Kevin Feige is the one that pushed this. Kevin Feige is the one that was like, yo, how do we get you back in the MCU? Never mind the easiest answer, which would have just been a variant Tony Stark, a variant Tony Stark that probably just went bad. You could have just done that. That would have been easy. And you still would have made the same amount of money. If you tell me evil Tony Stark is back, who is not showing up for that? Superior Iron Man is a thing. But whatever. So Kevin Feige is the one that wants to be extra with all this and make Robert Downey Victor Von Doom, even though Mads Mikkelsen was sitting right there. Killian Murphy was sitting right there. But whatever. What? What? kind of sort of bothers me just a little bit is what Ro Robert Downey said I looked into this character you didn't know who Victor Von Doom was you don't know who Dr. Doom is in Marvel I'm not going to call it a red flag, but I will say it's a yellow flag. Victor Von Doom is a, he's a complicated character. Tony Stark was a character that I feel as though Robert Downey could just be like, oh, arrogant, rich billionaire. I got it. I don't need to see nothing else. I got it. Easy, easy for him to understand. He could play that role. Victor Von Doom, on the other hand, this is the guy with a God complex. This is the guy with um, insecurities when it comes to his intelligence compared to Reed Richards. This is a guy who is also in love with Sue uh, Richards. This is a guy who is a leader of a country, Latveria, like he, and he's a good leader to his people. Oh, he take care of his people. This is the guy who dibs and dabs in the dark arts. This is the guy who, you know, masters, you know, technology almost as well as Tony Stark, this is, a, this is a complicated character. And you just looked into him? First of all, what does that even mean? You just flip, flip through a comic or two? <sighs> 
So I hope, I hope that he gets it right. I trust him as an actor to do very well. I do trust him on that front. Um, and I and I'm assuming that Marvel will do whatever they need to do to catch him up if he's not aware. If he's not. By the way, they also mentioned in this article that this conversation happened about a year ago. A year ago. What was going on a year ago? So right when, for those that don't recall, <clears throat> Jonathan Majors was in the middle of his case. And Feige was like, backup plan set. I mean, I think that it would be naive to believe that Marvel wasn't going to try and figure out a backup plan for Jonathan Majors. They had to. They they knew that this could go either way. They knew that it could be a problem one way or another. So the fact that they were having these conversations a year ago, I think they kind of told on themselves a little bit, but they were already trying to pivot. Um, The article goes on to say that Downey already wanted to meet with uh, Bob Iger um, and uh, about contributing to the company's parks location-based entertainment. For those of you that don't know, Downey will be coming back uh, in some of the theme parks to play Iron Man for, and you know, for some of the rides that they're going to have. They're going to have like uh, King Thanos and Iron Man and all this stuff going on. So in the theme parks, Downey was going to come back for that anyway. But he went to Iger's home. He went to his home and Iger already seemed to know about the Dr. Doom idea and quickly told Downey, I like it. That means that Iger and Feige had already been talking about this from the jump. Before they even went to Downey, they already were talking about this. And Downey said, you want to talk about two guys that are not easy to have their minds blown, let alone at the same time. What is going on there right now is so beyond my expectations of what was possible. So he's just blown away at the fact that Iger and Feige were just blown away with this whole idea and that they were really sold on this whole Downey as Doom thing. And let's be honest, there's no way Downey would be able to say no to this. Why? We just talked about the crazy payday this man was about to get. This man, they we talked, they gave him the Avengers jet, you know, they 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 built a whole town for him of trailers or whatever. He's getting a fulfilling dollars. Like, yeah. But at the end of the day, it does always come down to the basics. This is gonna put butts in seats. This is gonna be a two billion dollar movie, and Secret Wars is gonna be also a two billion dollar movie, and that's minimum so if it don't make dollars it don't make sense and this makes a lot of sense and dollars for disney so uh jm what you got uh opening of doomsday should be majors and downey kang and doom dialogue similar to the opening of infinity war or doom arriving in wakanda i'd be okay with that um here's the thing and, and let's just make it even more simple i'd be fine if you go into a parallel universe right where kang the conqueror has come back and he's literally defeated the Avengers of that timeline. All you see is just their dead bodies, shields, all that stuff. Just show us that Kang was a problem. Because just like you mentioned, in Infinity War, we saw Thanos mollywop and put the Hulk to sleep. That was an immediate way to show us this guy is a problem. But if you come in, and let's just say Dr. Doom is just like, ha-ha, you guys are all in the Council of Kang. I blew you all up and that's over with. Like to me, I don't like that mainly because Kang is a constant in time. He's not a character that you could be like, oh, I killed him and that's it. He's always available. This is the guy that was at the beginning of time, in the middle of time, and at the end of time. He's conquered time. So you're going to have to find a way to 
wrap that up in a better way than just, oh, I killed all the variants. He's always going to have a variant because he, he he was living outside of time. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know. I feel like that's going to get messy. But for the sake of the movie, yes, you're going to have to at least show me him defeating Doom. And I would hope you include Doom defeating the Avengers or heroes or whatever just to let Doom go, uh, let the, uh, Kang go out on a good note. Anyway, guys, what do y'all think about Robert Downey? Uh, I would say confirming the fact that he is going to play Victor Von Doom. Um, how do you feel about the fact that Marvel had this in the plans at least for a year now? Um, and yeah, how, do, how are you feeling about Dr. Doom coming into the MCU this way? Whatever you think, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. This was just a segment of one of my live chats, and if you're interested in joining in on the next one, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all, and until next time, I'll see you all later.